In this video, I'll show you how to use the Google Gemini API for beginners. We'll build a simple command line Node.js application in which we will generate text from text only input. We'll use streaming for faster interactions. We'll also take a look at the Gemini Pro Vision API, which we'll use to generate text from text and image input. Google recently released their brand new Gemini API. This means that you can call their API and get responses directly from Google Gemini AI, which means you can essentially build AI into your own applications, which is super powerful. This opens up exciting new business opportunities. I've already made a video where I shared eight best AI business ideas that you can start using the Google Gemini API. If you want to check out the video, the link should pop up on the screen. I'll also leave a link in the description. The good news is that the API is free within limits and is very easy to use. So let's get started. You can access Gemini API from two places, Google AI Studio and the Vertex AI. You'll need a Google account in both cases. If you'd like to access Gemini AI from Vertex AI, you'll need a Google account, Google Cloud account with billing enabled. If you're just getting started, I recommend trying out the API in the Google AI Studio. It's easier and when ready for fully managed enterprise AI platform, you'll be able to easily transition your AI Studio code to Vertex AI for additional customization and Google Cloud features. As a prerequisite, You'll need a Node.js version 18 or above. You can download it from nodejs.org and a code editor like Visual Studio Code. You can download it from code.visualstudio.com. They are free. Now that we have covered the prerequisites, let's jump into my computer and show you exactly step by step how to use the Gemini API. The most important thing to get started is to get an API key. You can get an API key by going to ai.google.dev Click Get API Key in Google AI Studio. Click Get API Key and create an API Key in New Project. Google AI Studio creates a new Google Cloud project for each new API key. You can also create an API key in an existing Google Cloud project. So your API key is generated and this is the only time you're going to copy this. So hit Copy and the API key is copied into the clipboard. So now what we're going to do is create a new folder. I'm going to call it Gemini API Tutorial. Open this folder with Visual Studio Code and create a new .env file. Paste the API key. I'm going to call it API underscore key equals to the API key. Let's also create a getignore file. I don't want to accidentally commit this API key to GitHub because I'm going to be creating a GitHub repository for this code and I'll be sharing the link in the description. So I don't want to commit .env node underscore modules. Please don't try to use this API key because I'm going to be removing it once I record this tutorial video. Like I mentioned, this API key is free. You can get your own. You get a generous 60 requests per minute, which is more than enough if you're trying to build a small application. Let's install dependencies. npmi.env at Google Generative. Okay, our dependencies have been installed. Now we are ready for coding. The things that I'm teaching you in this video, I've learned it from the documentation. So let's head over to the documentation. You can get to the documentation for Node.js by going to this URL. Let's uh, generate text from text only input. I'm going to copy the sample code. Let's head back to Visual Studio Code. Let's create a new file, index.js. I'll paste the code that I copied from the documentation. This is the code. I'm going to use the .env library called const PNV require V. I'm going to call the config method. This allows us to use the, the process.env environment variables like API key that we set up in the env file. So let's save this and run this code. Node index.js. It's taking a while. And as you can see, we are getting a response from Gemini AI. This is in response to the default prompt that is here. Write a story about a magic backpack. If you want a different prompt, we can modify this prompt. I'm going to say write a poem about a starry night. 
Let's save this and run it again. Note index.js. As you can see, it's processing the request and uh, we get back a response from Gemini AI. This is a poem about the starry night and the expanse of midnight blue. A celestial canvas comes into view. It rhymes, it sounds like a great poem. But the problem with this is that each time we want uh, to write a prompt, we need to come over here, change this variable, run the code, and then we are getting a response. We want to be able to create an interface in Node.js so that we can interact with Gemini AI without having to come back to this code and change the variables. And the best way that we can do that is by using a library called readline. So I'm going to import that readline require read line. This is a built-in Node.js library and we need to create an interface. So to, to do that, we'll create a variable called user interface line that create interface. And we need to provide two properties, input process dot is standard n, stdin and output process dot std out and save it so we created an interface let's from the user let me comment out this function i don't want to run it let's do user interface dot prompt and so what it does is if i if i run this you see you get a prompt you can type something and the application will do something once you enter this line now we need to set up an event listener. We can do it online. User interface dot on line. What that means is that whenever we hit enter, we want to call call this function with the input, and we want to do something with that input. So let's copy whatever we have over here. I'm going to cut it. I'll paste it over here. We can get rid of this prompt because we don't need it anymore and replace this prompt with input and we can leave the rest the same and we can get rid of this function. Let's run this and see if it works. Note, now I can say, hi, who is this? I get a response from Gemini AI. It says, I'm a conversational AI or chatbot trained by Google. I'm designed to be informative and comprehensive. I can say what can you do? Yep, so I get a response back from the AI and it's telling me the things that it can do. That's good, but I want the response to be interactive and come in as it's generated. So to do that, we can use the streamed response. And to get a faster interactive responses, we can change this result model. Instead of generate content, we can say generate content stream like this and provide the input in an array and then I want to write a loop for each chunk of the result dot stream I want to get the chunk text from chunk dot text and console dot log chunk text and so we don't need this anymore. I can get rid of this. And now when I save this, I can run, I can say, hi, how are you? And you can see now I get faster response. I get the response as it's generated. I don't have to wait for the whole response to be completed before I get it. I get the response in real time. This is so cool. So this is how we can use the streamed response. Now let's take a look at the multimodal input. Let's create a new file to work with the Gemini ProVision API. I will call this multimodal.js. Let's go back to the documentation and co copy the sample code. I will copy this code and I'll paste it in the new file. I'm not explaining the code because it's pretty easy and straightforward. The comments have been all already included. As you can see, we're using the same library and we need to use dot env. We need to use .env to access our API key as an environment variable. I can call config over here. This will allow us to use our environment variables from the env file. Here, this function converts local file information to a Google Generative AI part object. We have an async function over here. 
For text and image input, we use the Gemini Pro Vision. Here, we provide a prompt, and we can provide a single image or multiple images in an array. We can provide up to 16 individual images, which should not exceed the file size of four megabytes along with the prompt. Over here, we send the prompt along with the images to the Gemini AI. We wait for a response, and once we receive the response, we display it and console log the text. Let me copy a couple of images to work with the Gemini ProVision API. I have downloaded a couple of images. An image one, I have my logo, and the second picture, a bunch of vegetables. So I'm going to copy these two files. I'm going to move it to my folder. And once I go back to Visual Studio Code, I should be able to see these two images. We need to make sure that we use the, the correct file name. As you can see, I have image1.jpg, so we need to make sure that it matches the file. And I, I need to change this as well, jpeg. And the second file is image2 is also jpeg. For now, let me just use one image. I'll change this prompt to say, what's this image? Question mark. I will save this and run it. This is the image I provided. It's sending the image along with the prompt. And as you can see, it's saying the image is a logo for a company called Coding Money. The logo is blue and green rectangle with the diamond in the center is describing this image perfectly. Let me provide this image and give it a more specific prompt. I'm going to say, tracked the, the objects in the provided image and output them in a list in vertical order. And uh, now I'm going to use image two. I will save this, run. I'm getting an error. Yes, I don't have the correct file name. It is JPEG. So I'm going to save this, run it again. And this is the image that I have provided. It's got all the objects correctly. I can provide multiple images in the same prompt. I can say image1.jpg along with image2. And the prompt I'm going to say, describe the provided images. Save run it. I provided these two images. It's going to send the prompt, these images along with the prompt to Gemini AI, and it's going to get back with the response. Now, as you can see, the first image is of a logo that says coding money. The logo is blue and green with a diamond in the middle that has a dollar sign on it. The second image is of a group of vegetables. I hope you enjoyed this video. In case you missed it, check out my last video where I share eight best AI business ideas in just eight minutes. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Would you be interested in videos about building an AI business from scratch? Feel free to share your ideas for upcoming videos or if you have any questions. If you found this video useful, a thumbs up would be highly appreciated. Stay tuned for exciting new videos. To ensure you don't miss out, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Until next time, thank you for watching. Around the rugged rocks, the ragged rascal ran.